Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. In this video, we will be exploring the art of enhancing page edges to create breathtaking beauty, wonderful works of art, as well as to adorn our journals and our handmade books. Now, don't worry, we won't be doing this in the car. I'm just filming this section in the car while waiting for my kids. And they're here. And it's just started scripted. <laughs> Make me laugh. Tickle me. <laughs> and they're here. They're here. And it started raining. Perfect time. What, what's that? What have you got there? What's that? I remember, <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> Maybe we'll open this so you can see my entire organized craft space. I will be sharing 34, possibly more, distinct techniques that I personally used while crafting this entire book and embellishing over a hundred page edges. I'm not suggesting that your books need to look like this or have this much stuff in them. In fact, I would argue otherwise. These are simply inspiring examples all in one place to help ignite your creative spark. And you can use these ideas and examples on any book of your choice. Junk journals, handmade books, notebooks, planners, diaries, altered books like this one, and so on. All right, let's dive in. I just realized something. Where's that book? This book, my book. This is what I realized, look. This is not intentional. There's the picture of the author, which is moi. And the author is wearing the exact same top. And you can even see the bra straps and that's really killing me. And you can see them here as well. Look at that. I don't know why I chose this photo, but it was all that I had at the time. Whoa, ah, ah, ah. I don't know why I did that. The way that this will work is I'll flip through the book and we'll go page by page. Some pages may need a quick tutorial, so I will do it in order that these pages come up. Each new idea that comes up, I will write on the screen some way so that you can take notes if you wish to do so. And one last thing, as I said, there are over 30 ideas in here and over 100 examples. So that means that some ideas repeat, but none of the pages are the same. So make sure you stand till the end so that you don't miss anything. In fact, one of my favorite ideas is right at the end of the book. All right, idea number one is a really, really straightforward and a simple one, and it's just to use beautiful trims. So dive into your stash and see what you can find. I picked out some of my favorite trims here that I don't have much of and I really am hoarding them. But this is just to spark some ideas and perhaps remind you of things that you have in your stash. I think it always looks a little bit better if your trim has this kind of an edge rather than this kind of an edge. So this is completely straight edge and all these other trims have you know, something going on on the edge. So that's always nice. And it's also nice to have it kind of coming off of the page. If you like that look of all of these beauties being visible. Idea number two is also a really simple one and it looks really beautiful on a page. You can see I've done it on both sides and basically it is the bottom strips on the 12 by 12 paper. Sometimes they won't have anything pretty. It will just have like the brand and name of the paper. But oftentimes you will find that there's like a strip of something pretty cool underneath. So how easy is that? Let's just keep going because that's just way too easy. Idea number three is to use layered punched out shapes. I love, love, love this idea. Look at this. Do you see that? That's just heart shapes that are punched out, all different papers. And then I did exactly the same on the other side. Isn't that cool? It's just sticking out off the page slightly so that it's visible. I'm going to do a little mini demonstration with just a couple of hearts. Ink the edges, and then you start gluing. So you only need to apply glue onto one half of the heart if you want the other part to be sticking out. 
and then you just layer them slightly as in overlap them actually is what I wanted to say you don't have to you can just really depends on what shape you're using you could be using butterflies it doesn't have to be hearts you know but I think overlapping them slightly looks really nice I repositioned them a little bit because you know there's I wanted it to be symmetrical top and bottom really depends on how many hearts you can fit and then to make it really finished because that's what that looks like on the other side to make it finished you go ahead and you grab your next hat and then you're just applying glue to the whole surface and gluing it down and you can see the edges of the previous hearts and then you just keep going but for the sake of this video i'm going to leave this one here and you can see the effect of that on both sides i think it just uh, makes a complete when you do it on both sides okay idea number four i don't know what to name this but i'm, I'm calling it ripped up pretty paper or painty paper so i have a whole lot of these sheets that i either did by myself or just crafting with my kids just splashing paint on paper and now i have a whole bunch of sheets like this that when you're using small sections it looks really quite nice and of course we are wrapping around the edge i mean this video is about edges but if you can incorporate those edges into the design of the page like i created writing space here right you know even better so that's that one just cut it to size glued this edge down and leave this one left this one to be able to be opened next idea is a repeat idea this is the repeat idea of the shapes so here we've done hearts we were overlapping and here all i've done is circles and again the same on this side i mean by overlapping the circles and here i added hearts here i added butterflies and a little bit of doodling and it just looks so fabulous i'm totally in love with this one absolutely love it the whole thing like the, the white circles and then the the butterflies and then all of it right and here we have the hearts idea number five is stickers and look how fabulous this page looks it looks like it's printed onto the book page you can see on this side it looks like it's part of the book page i did all of the edges as you can see top bottom and side well not this one all of the free edges and all i used here is stickers like i said and these stickers are a little bit extra special i have to say because they do have the gold foiling and i love stickers with gold foiling but i have other examples of stickers if you don't have these pretty ones that's fine you don't need to have anything special but for this one i used these stickers in here there's all sorts of different ones uh, this came in the grabby boxes i'll link that video if you want to have a look at what else comes in the grabby boxes but anyway these are the stickers that i used and they are transparent so when i peel it off you can see that when that's stuck down it becomes transparent and i think it's better it's a better look than having the white borders around the stickers but i think that also would work idea number six is to use eyelash trim or yarn or any of that i don't know fun stuff that you might have in your stash and weaving it through the page so i actually did two things here i have a washi tape and then i have the eyelash trim and i did i think it's called blanket stitch so just hand stitched the edge of that page and it's kind of a really meditative thing to do and i absolutely love uh, doing hand stitching on paper in general you don't have to do kind of the whole edge like this you can just punch some holes and then just go in you know just a line here's what i mean i am just punching some holes you can really do anything absolutely anything I'm, i know i'm preaching to the choir here i'm sure you know this kind of thing but oh i missed one here doesn't matter you can, anything you do it's gonna look cool you can wrap around the edge and since we are doing decorative edges that's why i wrapped around the edge rather than just do the lines because then it wouldn't be visible but you can do a combination of all sorts of things i'm being really messy here ripping the page and you know when you're using a really thick needle and thick uh, thread or yarn then of course there is that chance of ripping the page but it wouldn't rip if i was being a, a bit more careful 
And also another thing that you can do, of course, is to first apply masking tape or like I did in this case, you can see I have a little bit of washi tape. It's Christmas washi tape, so I just kind of used it so it's not, you know, it's not visible. It doesn't look Christmassy. Moving along to idea number seven, really simple one. It's just a ruffled ribbon. You may have seen this box in my tutorials previously or in my videos. And basically what I do when I have leftover strips of paper, I do many different things as I share on this channel. But this is one of the things that I do. I use strips of paper, I use leftover ribbon, and I just do go to my machine and do this kind of stuff. I also do full rolls. I'll insert video here and in the description box you can have a look at that. Full rolls of ruffled paper, I'm not using ribbon, only paper in that video. But anyway, this box is a ribbon and paper. So when I am embellishing my journals and making fun stuff like this, all I have to do is come in, oh, here it is, exactly the same one. Come into this box and pick out a little thing and glue it onto the side of the page. It just helps so much to have things that you make as you go. And then when it comes to the work, you can just go in and grab it and it's ready. So another thing that I did is I wanted to get rid of the straight edges. So I don't know if you can see the line is a little bit wiggly here. I'm talking about the paper underneath. So I just went in with the scissors, made that straight edge wiggly and inked the edges and glued it down onto the side so that it's sticking out a little bit. And you know, I do have to say here, as I was working through the book, I didn't go, of course, in order. I did a page here, page here, page here. There's over a hundred pages in the book and I just kept going in a random fashion. But as I was working, I kept checking what the edges are looking at, like what's sticking out. Like I want everything to be at least a little bit visible, which can be difficult when you have things that are really sticking out. You can see the yellow. I mean, it's not sticking out too much this way, but you can see it in there. And by the way, just in case if you're wondering, this book was falling apart and it was going to be destroyed, thrown in the rubbish bin. And I was lucky enough to find it in the free pile at my local op shop. I think a lot of more op shops and thrift stores should have a free pile because what they do, they just throw things in the bin. Why not offer it for free and then people come and take what they want? So anyway, that's my opinion. My local op shop does it and that's how I picked up this book. It was falling apart, so I kind of had to do a quick little repair here. I should also say that before I, before I started embellishing the book, I had to remove a whole lot of pages. In case you want to do this particular project, you can see how many pages I removed. I just went in and probably removed about half the book. I'm going to link a video up here and the description box where you can go and have a look, you know, about removing the pages. But basically, I didn't remove the middle, the very middle of the signature where the sewing is. This page I left in all of the signatures, I left it as it is. And I only removed pages on the sides of those middle pages. And let's keep going. The next idea is a repeat one. We're using the leftover strips from the 12 by 12 paper. And sometimes those strips have writing on them as does this one. So t this one says, today is good, today was fun, tomorrow is another one. So I just continued onto the next page and then glued another piece of pretty paper down. Idea number eight is very similar to the previous idea, which was ruffled ribbon. This one here is ruffled paper. So this is pretty cool because this thing that I used here is a measuring tape from Ikea. And I may have taken a couple of this, these last time I was at Ikea. I mean, I didn't go crazy. I, I promise I didn't. And then just took it to my sewing machine, ruffled it up as I'm going. You will see in that video if you haven't seen it before. Ink the edges and then I glued it down. So there's no actual sewing through the page. Idea number nine, love this idea, is using postage stamps. The idea for this book is eventually, you know, to cover all of the pages in some way. So you can see I started here and over here. And I just love how this looks. So basically, 
uh, we are just pretty much doing the same thing that we did for the hearts but we're not doing it in such a neat and orderly fashion the postage stamps are just glued haphazardly onto the edge of the page half sticking out and then again the same thing on the next side so if you have a closer look the, the stamps that i used to kind of glue on top of each other are kind of the same size i do have a lot of stamps because i have over the years built up my stash of stamps and i don't feel bad using them to be honest with you because i don't know like if they're really special really old stamps i won't use them but you know how many of these australia stamps i have plenty so anyway let's move along this one here again is a repeat idea i just covered the page here and this is using painting paper and on this side this one opens up like so and on this side it's a pocket and let me just say these painting papers um nothing special when they're done just like this as a, as a piece of nothingness and some of them are better than others right this one is done with balloons but what i wanted to say is once you incorporate them into a larger project like i did here and you know you rip it down you ink the edges you make it into a pocket or a flip up it just makes the whole thing come alive so have a play with some paints and then have these on hand like this one for example looks so much better in this book than it does when it's just an on its own piece of paper i just want to point out the little bit of glittery sparkle on this painting paper which i can see in person but it's really not coming out in video that much but really it's just mark making with like sponges and stuff and paint and then i went over it with glitter i think i should do a video one day just just playing with paint and then you create a whole bunch of painting papers all right we are up to idea number 10 which is ticket stubs now these are decorative ones obviously you can see on did it on both sides but i'm talking about things like this these are raffle tickets they would work things like this you know ticket i don't know i've had this for a long time but i don't know where i got it from but then uh, a lot of ephemera packs that we buy and stuff will come with this sort of thing and they look really nice on the edge of the pages and of course i did it on both sides moving on to idea number 11 really simple straightforward i'm not even going to talk about it it's just fabric all i did was glued a little bit of fabric over the edge of the paper leaving you know a bit of it to stick out just glue one side down hold it over and glue the other edge down and you can get so much more creative than just this and in fact we do as we go along added a bit of paint here for a journaling spot okay this here is idea number 12 and i'm just calling it tabs and this can go in you can do so much stuff with this so i'll just show you what i have going on first of all i have a little bit of doodling here for writing then i have strips of paper glued to the side they're kind of sticking out then i have this part here then i have over here when this is removed this one here opens up and I think this one here opens up as well. So we can, you know, <laughs> I can do so much is what I'm trying to say. But I'm just calling it tabs. <laughs> oh, and this as well. So all I did here is glued this piece down and then added a little bit of a charm that's kind of sitting outside of the book and when the book is closed there's enough string so that when i know this is going to be hard to see but i think it makes sense so when the book is sitting up these little things are out of the way what is the purpose of this i hear you say it's a very good question indeed what is the purpose of the painting on your wall you know same kind of thing in my eyes anyway we're decorating a space we're decorating a space and it might mean something to us before i continue idea number 13 is the paper clips so i don't know if i'm cheating by calling this uh, an extra idea but you can add all sorts of stuff to a paper clip to decorate a page edge so it's like a dual purpose just checking what i've got in my drawer i have some ready-made 
you know, you just clip little things onto the side of a paper clip. And then when it's clipped onto your work, I'm sure you know this, but you can include all sorts of stuff just by doing that. Look how cool that looks. These ones I kept simple. I just used a little bead. Let's move along. So here are the repeating ideas, which is the strip on the 12 by 12 paper and the hearts overlapping. I love this idea. Next idea, really simple. Idea number 14 is to use washi tape. I started off with the washi tape and I mean, we can do better than that, can't we? But let's just keep it in there. Idea number 15 is to cut twiggly lines and do a little bit of doodling. I actually did that on the three pages here. I do have this metal ruler that I found in my stash. I must have had it for a long time. So I kind of used that and that's how I got the exact same wiggled lined edges. But I think it would look even better if the edges are a completely different shape, if that makes sense. And then all I did is just added some dots anyway. I don't know how fabulous this idea is, but for an art journal, I, I really like it. And I think it can be explored like we can do a whole video on just this type of thing and we're moving along again repeating idea here with the washi tape you can see that gold foiling just makes life so much better all right idea number 15 actually 16 is to use notepads again really quite simple listen these are all really simple ideas that's the whole point but then you create this beauty we're just really you know, I hope you're not disappointed. You're like, really? Notepads? But anyway, this is what I'm talking about. If you have these kinds of things, and I'm sure you, you might have something like this at home or, or like something like this, you know, whatever you have at home. And then you're just kind of playing around with placement. I actually did use a whole lot of these ideas in the previous video where I was using the book pages that I removed from this book. I'll link that video. You might have seen it. I'll link it everywhere. I do still have a whole lot of book pages left that I removed from this book, but I did also create a whole bunch of stuff in the last video. Okay, here's a repeating idea, ticket stubs. Next idea, idea number 17, is this one here. I'm calling it doodled edges and they cut up and they're uneven. Again, I was using my painty paper that I did some stuff on and basically folded it in half and drew some doodles like this just like you can see with a sharpie and then cut it out making sure not to cut all the way to the edge so that i'm not separating the two pieces i hope that's making sense you can leave that into a pocket you can see it goes around to the other side and it looks really cool it looks really really quite fun you see that Oh, the amount of fun you can have with this. You can add eyelets, have little, you know, charms hanging off. And you, can you see that straight edge? Straight edge. I kind of didn't want to cut, you know, the whole thing. So I had to leave some of the edges intact. This one here falls within the same category. This is just me doodling on some black paper. Uh, in fact, me and my daughter had a doodling session. This is her little piece. So it's just using gel pens, right? And then when you fold it in half, look how cool this looks. You fold it in half, glue it onto the side of your page. I went in and cut some wiggly lines. You can see that. Oh, and I have to tell you about this. But before I do that, I also wanted to show you this piece. Look how good this looks. I'm loving how this looks. And this was a joint venture of me and my daughter sitting outside and just doodling on black paper she drew the middle here and she drew all these houses and this here and this here and i kind of went in adding little details she drew the lines so i want to frame this like i love her that much she doesn't like it i don't know why but you see when it's folded and then if you cut some wiggly edges like this one here it just looks so good and then i wish i could open this one so i can show you but the actual edge like I made sure that I did it, I folded a piece first and then I did, you know, folded, opened, and then I knew where the middle is, so I did this, these circles kind of thing. And another thing I wanted to show you on this page is this, you see this? You know, really quite beautiful and very easy to do. So basically you have your piece, 
Okay, you fold it in half or it's already folded in half. It's going to be glued down on the page like this. You can glue one side down. Let's say you've glued that side down. Then I'm just looking at what I have around me. You grab your piece of thread and then you glue this side down. So now it's glued down completely, let's say. And then you have these two threads here that you can go ahead and make into something fun. You can add beads here, make it like a little handle. You can tie a bow here, make it even more more of a fun edge or you can do what i did here and just add some beads to the edges but make sure that you're leaving a little bit of space for movement you can see that space there and especially down here at the bottom because when i sit the book upright this has to go somewhere you see that it has to be able to move out of the way kind of thing Otherwise, it will bend the pages and, and, you know, might interfere with the book. This is a repeating idea. It's just pretty trim. And I can't even tell you how much I love the look of this on the side of the book. I used it three times through the book. Here, here, and oh, right in there. One, two, three. So this was actually sent to me in a Happy Mail. And I just really love how that looks so i just glue one side to this side of the paper and then the other edge to this side of the paper and look at that beautiful edge how cool does that look idea number 18 is ribbon wrapped around the edge we're wrapping pretty much exactly the same way here so just get out your ribbons what kind of ribbons do you have christmasy ribbons halloween ribbons you know what have you got look at this look at how cool these ribbons look the more gold the better in my eyes anyway so this is like a christmas ribbon at, which is what i used here and just fold it in half well it's actually folded in half when it's glued onto the page so i glue one side down just like that turn the page over fold it down and glue the other side down and of course leave a little bit sticking off sticking out off of the page and that's that one done okay this one here is idea number 19 and it's just long strips of paper folded in half really quite simple so again we're using whatever you have you know i'm sure you have something like this somewhere look at this and this and this you know i don't think i need to keep going all i did here on this page created all of this writing space i was going to go in and put eyelets in in the middle of these and then have charms hanging but i, d I don't know did i forget i might have forget forgotten and look at this we're just folding it in half i went in with a corner punch i have this fancy little corner punch that I just did that here. I just rounded the edges. They don't have to be the same size. Of course, whatever fits on your page. And then here's my page in the book. That gets, that's probably sticking out a bit too much over here on the side. So I just, of course, shortened it first before I started gluing them down. And creating writing space, beautiful edges and tabs. You know, these are also like little tabs. So that's pretty cool. And we're doing two pages at once. Fabulous. Love that idea. Idea number 20 is writing. And I know it's not you know, all that great, but it can be if you make it. Like if you make you know, big writing, you can do words from a magazine. It doesn't have to be your writing. I just randomly wrote some sentences down here, um, added the lines. I did the lines first and then wrote on top of the lines and then colored in. And that's all it is. So, okay. Idea number 21 is using paper punches, but instead of using the punched out shapes like we did here, we are actually punching onto the page. So there's a few different things that I did on this page. First of all, I glued a magazine page down created this um, little canvas let's call it then i took my punches you can see here the hearts i actually used those hearts like in these you know a few of those hearts i also punched out some circles and then i popped to, through some twine you can see this just a little bit of twine like it's you know you can do all sorts of fun stuff there and then added some charms onto the twine you can take in so many different ways, so many different ways. You can make 
like weaving, you know, blanket stitch doesn't have to be sticking out, twine that's sticking out over the page. It can be, I don't know, pretty ribbon. It can be, I don't know, what's this? I don't know, it can be something like this. You know, just an idea that we can elaborate. So this was actually idea number 21, using page, paper punches, and also idea 22, which is adding threads and twine and fun, fun, fun. This is a repeating idea here. We don't need to go into that. And also over here, love that look. Next one, idea number 23 is a ruffled fabric. I have this kind of thing. These are old wraps that I used on my babies, when my kids when they were babies. And then I ripped them up, kept some for memories, but I'm not a hoarder. So I ripped them up, coffee and tea dyed them, and, and then I can use them in my projects like this pop this through my sewing machine I actually used you can see underneath a leftover piece from these ticket stubs which I actually used in this project previously and it had this you know, sitting on my desk anyway this is all unimportant basically went to my sewing machine and sewn this directly onto a scrap piece of paper I found on my desk which happens to be this and then I glued it down onto the book just in case if you're wondering how do you get sewing onto a book it can be done. You can get maneuver your book and kind of, you know, but it's difficult to do that with the sewing machine. So I do it on a scrap piece of paper first and then glue it down onto the side of the page. And of course, oh, look, it's not, I was going to say it's sticking out, but this one's not. It's hidden beneath all of these layers, but it's in there. And we've got a repeating idea washi tape there. Idea number 24 is using lace. Uh, that's pretty standard we all do it but i kind of wanted to show you what i did here have a little bit of ribbon going through the middle and then here i kind of layered the same thing but a little bit down so that we have this step kind of thing going on idea number 25 is scrapbook paper these are the first very first things that i was trying out just folded down some scrapbook leftover piece of paper just like this it can be any piece of paper cut a wiggly line ink the edges and glued one side down completely and the other the other side are left as a pocket repeating idea here we've spoken about and again here idea number 26 is using fabric scraps in this particular instance oh i just realized i was going to actually beautify this completely but i didn't all I did is used leftover fabric scraps because I have a fabric scrap spin and just, you know, stapled it onto the edge. Nothing is glued down. It's all kind of all over the place. My plan was to hide the staples so we can use something like this. I can go into my little box over here and grab some stuff and just embellish. I can use a little flowers or something like that. Hiding the staple. I mean... It does make it look better, let's be honest. I was also going to hang some charms, but I did decide that I have plenty of charms on there, so I just kind of did it and just left it as it is. But that was this was definitely something that I was planning to do, to embellish or to hide the staples. So there we have it. Moving along, this is a repeating idea here, just a beautiful, any kind of trim that you might have in your stash. If you're just starting out, you might not have a huge stash. I just popped some little things hanging down. But if you've been doing for a few, doing this for a few years, you will have a huge stash of just things that you find, things that people give you. And there we have it. Again, repeating idea washi tape. This here is idea number 27. And this is just a leftover little piece from a project. And again, I didn't finish this. I was going to put a gold eyelet through here because this piece is actually sticking up off of the book up here. So I wanted a gold eyelet is what I wanted here. I can do a brad, I can do a little something. So that's a plan. Like I said, this book is a work in progress. And I left it kind of free. I didn't go down. And I'm just contemplating like what else we could do here. I could do what I did on this page here these little threads with the beads hanging down i can do the same thing here so we can add more beads it just perhaps doesn't serve an actual purpose but neither does washi tape i mean none of this actually in, in my eyes it does serve a purpose i had fun making it and it's going to be sitting on my shelf 
and I'm going to enjoy looking at it. So that's the purpose of this book. Repeating idea here, fall in love with as many things as possible. So just using the bottom strips of big papers. Again, repeating idea here, which is just, I mean, not very imaginative, but it's just writing on the side of the page. You can use gel pens, different colors, and you can do bubble writing like this type of thing. This is bubble writing, something that I do in my planner. Make a fancy, right? You can do stamping. That's not one of the ideas, but you know, you can color it in and anyway. Okay, here's the, uh, uh, also a repeating idea. This is stickers again. But in this case, I'm not using those beautiful transparent stickers. And I have to say, these are quite beautiful stickers of butterflies, but these are, this came in a kid's pack. This is nothing, this is from a $2 shop. Nothing, you know, fancy, right? And I, ho I have a whole bunch of these stickers and they don't have nice edges. They're all squarish kind of things. So I still think that we can make it look nice. And yeah, I mean, am I totally in love with it? Probably not, like I'm not, you know, loving it as much as the other things, but I think it works. And I like the holographic kind of look of the stickers and yeah, it's in there now, so. Idea number 29 is charms basically throughout the journal and on all of those edges there's a whole lot of charms in here that are kind of hiding and hard to see when I'm laying the journal down they kind of fall in but anyway there's a whole lot in there charms just all over the place and now we're going to be kind of going through quickly because a lot of these ideas are repeating ideas strips of paper leftover pieces of paper paper clips with the little beads these don't open up but they're just you know glued pieces down washi tape here with gold foiling did some paint there this is a ribbon folded over the edge this is beautiful trim look at this i did that on both sides that was another op shop find look at this i have a whole roll and it just looks beautiful it does have this unfinished edge but it works on this project and then again we've seen this one before and we've seen the eyelash trim and the yarn this is just a different color the black and gold here and then i have the white and gold here again postage stamps we've seen that before and painting paint paint pee painting paint I can't talk. This one opens up this way. So here we've co I've covered the whole page. And then here, this one opens up. This one here is again a repeating idea. And again, I use just a piece from a scrap drawer and punched out circles. So there's a few things happening here that came from a scrap drawer, punched out circles, added twine, and then a whole bunch. Not a whole bunch, there's three. <laughs> these are actually sequins. And then this is a little gold charm. Added that onto the twine and there's that page edge done. Pretty cool, nothing special, but it looks quite special as part of the whole. Then we have washi tape, then again this ribbon, and again this trim, and again washi tape. And then over here, again, just a repetition of ideas. I did the scrapbook paper thing, but then I also went in, punched some circles or holes, I should say, when in with some type of a yarn just weaving it through like i did on this piece of paper and added a little bit of a little dragon uh, charm there and a little heart down here at the bottom and it's actually a pocket here and it's also a pocket on this side as well so i've only glued the top and the bottom now this one here oh this one's pretty cool a few things again happening this one opens up to the side. I have those paper clips. Pop down some writing space here. Weaved through a little ribbon that's sticking up outside of the book. So we're kind of decorating the top of the book a little bit as well. Could be done a bit more. And then, you know, this one closes. And then on this side, I wonder if, yeah, I don't think I've left anything open here. It's just all glued down, you know bit of paint, bit of this and bit of that. And again, that beautiful trim that I love. And again, this one here, just glued to the side of the, look how beautiful this trim is. And it just transforms everything instantly, pretty much. Glue this to the edge of this page. Pretty cool, look. All these are secondhand shop finds. Facebook marketplace, I barely buy anything new. Okay, this one here, this is a pocket here and also a pocket here. 
And then on the side, again, the same thing that we've already discussed. Oh, this is the one I wanted to mention. This is idea number 30. I think none of them really are groundbreaking, but when they're put in one work of art, then it can be. So let's take this for example. You are ripping your pieces to use up in your journals. I don't like this edge because it has the white, lots of white. So perhaps I'd be using this piece, but then you have these pieces left over. And if you're a normal person, you're gonna throw this in the bin. But you are not a normal person, are you? Yes, neither am I. So now what you're going to do, it's pretty self-explanatory, really. But now you have this piece that's going to go onto this edge here. And you're going to make it look better, which doesn't take much, if I'm being honest. And then you're going to go in and you're going to apply some glue. Then, of course, you glue it down onto the edge of your page because that's what this video is about. Get rid of the excess and please just throw that in the bin. Ink those edges. And there is that non-fabulous idea that I'm sure everyone's done before. But, I mean, from something pretty ugly, in my opinion, it was a little bit ugly, that board. I mean, it still kind of is. You can maybe, I don't know, add some stamping. Is it going to make it look better or worse? Well, it's done now. And I think it made it look better. But there we have it. Let's move along. So we were discussing this one, which was idea number 30. And this is a repeating idea that we've seen before. Again, you can see me covering. So then you can start marrying the ideas. Here we have washi tape and then a little bit of trim. You can do, I don't know, five, six different things, as I'm sure you've gathered. Here, I actually did take this to my sewing machine so see you can do it you take your home book there and you just sew through some pages and uh, i mean was i really very creative at this point in time when i created this what is it a bean a cashew casing or is it peanuts that come in that kind of it's a blob of something that i cut out and glued onto the page and sewn through lucky it's not actually one of the ideas okay we've seen this one before and again uh, I've included the little beads, not as long as the ones over here, but they are there. We've seen the ribbon, and again, we've seen this idea, and I actually did add a little eyelet here with this charm, which is like a sewing measuring tape little thing, so good for a sewing thing journal, but it's not heavy, it's plastic, it's not heavy, you don't want anything too heavy on your pages. But I still wanted to reinforce that hole with the eyelet. Okay, so we've got that. We've seen this. We've seen the ruffled ribbon. Only in this case, it's quite a large ribbon. And I'm loving how, how much dimension this one piece added. It's just a really wide ribbon that has this beautiful gold, a gold uh, edging on it. And then when I did the ruffling it up while sewing, this is what it created, this beautiful wave. It looks so good. Again, we've seen this one. Whatever makes you smile, oh, keep it. And again, ripped edges here. And oh, I was going to open that. Well, it's a pocket, so it doesn't open. Uh, again, the painted paper and then wiggly edge here. We've started off with this one, pretty trim. And then this is just another type of trim that I used. This was also sent to me. I think they were sent together. It's kind of, these are the colors that I don't really use in my projects much. I also don't use these colors either, but look how cool they look in this type of a project. And we're nearly at the end, hang in there. Some washi tape here, again, the painted paper. I love this, I just love this idea using up my painted papers. This is just a sticker, a little border there. Again, ruffled fabric. Oh, these are little stickers. I have no idea where this came from. These are the stickers that are, they're just like square stickers, nothing fancy. And I glued them down kind of in a diamond shape to the side and then used my pencil to go around them. And I don't know if you can see, looks pretty cool. I actually really like it. We're coming up to idea number 31, hopefully. So again, here we've used lace, so that's repeating and the pretty trim and the stickers all of it repeating and the what's happening here washi tape but i actually cut a wiggly line i hate that straight line 
off the washi, washi tape. I really don't like it. You see that straight line? I mean, this looks so much better. And then we've got the ticket stubs, repeating idea. And again, this one. Oh, here it is. Idea number 31. Again, not groundbreaking. These are the borders that come in the 6x6 paper pads. You can cut these out by hand. And these are not even matching. Like, they're different. And you can see they're kind of... I thought they were exactly the same, but they're not. So, anyway, that's cool because it's sticking out off of the page. You can see it. This one here is a repeating idea, let's say, because this is a sticker. It's velvet kind of sticker. And I just did some journaling spots there. And little little hearts. When I was punching out these shapes here, I kept, you know, they're just kind of, here's one. They're flying around on my desk and I just glue them down on the edge, little circles. So that's a repeating idea. And so is this one. This one's got some fun stuff a charm turtle charm there and just rings because i like the uh, the look of just the rings without the charms so i was going to put charms everywhere but i actually like that look again this here is a repeating idea uh, where i use the ikea measuring tape but i also used an off cut piece of the 12 by 12 you know that bottom piece and made a little ruffle there okay idea number what are we up to 32 using your pretty paper or your ephemera little pages and gluing them kind of askew you know not straight so in this case i just used two pieces from this little block and i'm sure you have stuff like this floating around you can use newspapers you can use magazines whatever you have and then coming into the page i only used two so my idea is I want to cover the whole border of the page. Let's get another one. So first I checked, how's this going to look? You know, how's this going to look? What did I do there? Something like that. Something similar like that. Make sure that whole thing is covered. Yeah, that's going to look good. Ink the edges. Glue this half down. And then turn it around. And then kind of apply glue and fold this side down. Pretty self-explanatory. Moving along to hopefully soon idea number 33, but here is a repeating idea with the yarn and again repeating idea with the stickers. I was being stingy at this point, didn't want to use any sticker stuff and bottom because I just love this idea so much. I want to save the stickers for actual journals and here is just a bit of fabric. And idea number 33 is to use your border punches. I only use, I mean, it's quite obvious, but I thought I will include it. Any kind of border punch that you have in your possession, as you can see, this one I got from, I don't know, some, some craft fair for five bucks. How good is this? And you can do this kind of thing where your beautiful stuff is on the inside of the page, or you can glue your paper down, pretend that's not punched out, and then you can come in and use the, the border punch on this page. That's pretty standard, so I'm not going to dwell. But idea number 34. Finally, my favorite one, actually. Actually, it was my favorite one yesterday, but today I don't know if it's still my favorite one. Just using paper flowers. <laughs> Were you like hoping for some kind of a bang at the end? We had like, oh, this, never thought of that. I'm sure you've thought about this before. Using paper flowers on the edges of your pages to make it just, you know, look so good along with everything else that's in this book. You know, I love this idea so much that I was kind of a little bit upset that I've used up all of my pages and this one has to be right at the end. And you know what? I've had, since finishing this book, which was yesterday, I've had a few more ideas pop into my head of the things that I could have used. But too late now because all of the pages are pretty much done. And to finish off, we have a piece of fabric, nothing much there. Then again, punched out shapes. This is just a punch, like, a, you know, that's kind of what the punch looks like. And just glued that on. Again, the IKEA measuring tape on the edge there. And then I continued with little black dots, little doodles. This idea again, where I was going to use an eyelet up here, but in this case, it's glued down. I glued that piece down completely. So, and again, repeating the border from paper pads, from the 6x6 paper pads idea. Last one, you know, by this point, 
I can tell you that I've had enough. Just a little piece of leftover fabric cut down with my zigzag stickers. Stickers, see what I mean? Zigzag scissors or the pinking shears or the shinking piers, however you want to call them. And glued it down and I said, you know what? I'm done. I have had enough. And just look at this final result, this richness. It's absolute richness in my eyes. And that concludes today's video. None of these ideas are groundbreaking on their own, but I think when they're put into a whole, it just looks absolutely beautiful. I can't even tell you how much I love this project. I love this altered book. And this is definitely a work in progress. I'm going to go back to the pages and embellish and add writing spots and all sorts of fun stuff. Please let me know what you think. Also, have a look at the video that I did last week where I actually used a lot of these pages that I removed from the book. Like I said, there was a whole lot of pages removed because I knew that all of this stuff is going to add a whole lot of bulk. And last week I did a video called Turning Book Pages into Writing Spots, Three Easy Ways. And there's a whole bunch of stuff that I did with all of the pages that I removed. So I hope you got lots of inspiration from this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you for still being here and I will see you in my next video. Bye.